Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome to a very exciting episode of Talking Heads on the fabulous USA Global TV radio and TV platform. Hi, my name is Dr. Madeline Chan and I'm going to be with you for the next 22 minutes. And we're going to talk this week about an exciting uh, uh, subject. It's going to be about dancing your way into a new life. Now, I guess you're wondering, what on earth is that meaning, dancing your way into a new life? Well, to be honest, with everything that's going on at the moment in this world, so much chaos. But all this chaos is happening for a reason, because Earth, planetary Mother Earth, she's a being, she is ascending. She's all she's already ascended spiritually, her light body, but her physical body needs to be needs to ascend, and therefore there needs to be some major cleanups, the same as with us. Spiritually, we are ascended because we have our light divineness within us. But in the physical body, we have not ascended because there's just too much there to be cleaned up, um, which could be past karma, karma relationships. It could be it could be anything that you've picked up of um, energy and lower vibration from this life as well. So before we even begin to dance our way into a new life. We need to first reaffirm ourselves that we are not perfect. We are not perfect as a human because there's certain traits of human, which is a low vibration. But we are absolutely divinely perfect in our soul essence in our how can i say in our innate higher, higher consciousness our lighter body we are perfect creator beings and when you dance your way into a new life it is about balancing your divine inner world with your physical body outer world and having these energies balanced to be able to deal with what's going on in the world today and it's all clearing it's all purification times 2023-24 it's all about purification and it's a case of it's all always been there but we have been so occupied with our own personal lives and our dramas, we have not even realized certain world karma is now coming up. Be it war karma, be it about certain um, abuse that's been going on, that's been going on under the masks in the underground. It's now coming up. It's now getting triggered to come up to be released. So to dance your way into your new life, 
you do have to connect to your inner child, your pure essence. I had to do it. And it's so difficult because even today, even though I was like, yeah, I'm going to dance my, you haven't to, you haven't to blame, you haven't to judge, you haven't to condemn, you haven't to do this because this is lower vibration. But, but the universe tests us. Oh boy, does the universe test us. And just when you think you are totally free and nothing can bring you down, or trigger you. Well, let me tell you something. If there is any remnants inside you of a certain event or a certain something that you feel you've cleared and you confirm it, oh, it doesn't even affect me. If you have a day of where you haven't had much sleep, so your 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 shield is down. So what I mean by shield is, let's look at, I always, before I go out the house, I always imagine beautiful and on these beautiful golden clothes, beautiful golden clothes, golden fabric. No one else can see it. It is just for my eyes only. Maybe some sensitives out there can feel it, but that is my protection. So I go out the door and I know I have my inner clothing the gold clothing there that protects me and gold for me is for protection i know then i am not even though someone is going to throw something at me because i'm protected i have this protection around me it may affect me emotionally on a physical level but it will not affect my inner child essence. Well, let me tell you something. If you haven't done this, and let's say you've had sleep deprivation, you haven't slept, and you go about like a robot to work, and you're not even thinking in the now presence, you're thinking, I'm going to be late, I'm going to be late, and everything is kind of against you, and suddenly you go to work, and then suddenly there's something that happens, a person just triggers. Could be, could be a song, could be anything, but it triggers you. And you end up going on a deep low. You end up the, you end up the tears welling. And you say, why is this affecting me? What is it? So then for me at work, I went to a quiet place and tears. Tears came, came from my eyes because I, I didn't realize that there were still some parts of what I went through that I hadn't dealt with. And I thought I dealt with it all. But the universe is there to clean every, every particle, every dust. Think of it as dust, right? And dust accumulates. And let's say there's a few speckles of dust that sometimes your eye doesn't see because maybe you've cleaned it and you're onto something else. You haven't actually really gone in and focused and made sure that the surface is clean. Now that speck of dust for purification times needs to be removed, needs to be brought up to the surface to cleanse to be released, to be forgiven. And that's exactly what happened today to me. After I did two minutes of remembering my power and who I was, not in an arrogant way, but how far I've come along and the fact that, yeah, and then I realized my defenses were down I had, I didn't put the protection on that I normally do. Because I didn't do that, the lower vibrations, think of it as energy. You've got love, 
light beings, love, heart beings. Then you have fear, lower vibrational beings, people of the non-light or people that are stuck. So they carry on not knowing what they're saying, what they're doing, what they're creating. Just being controlled and monopolized by the outside reality. And that's what happened with me today. So I did the prayer of forgiveness. I surrounded them in a beautiful, I chose pink light because pink light for me, cosmic light, was divine love, will and grace. Giving the grace, giving the divine will. And then when I came out back into the work energy and the atmosphere, the whole energy changed. And when I got home after work, suddenly these parts of me started to come up again, um, like apprehension, anxiety. And so a dear friend of mine, who's very um, in tune with the energies, said there's something odd, off about you today. And I explained. And then he sent me this beautiful song. Oh my God, it was absolutely beautiful. It had the right words, the right vibration. And I felt so attuned to this song. And it made me feel that, yeah, I am on the right track. And yeah, I've had a bit of a out of alignment day, but don't worry, keep going, keep, keep soldering on, keep shining on brilliantly and brightly. And then because I write, I wrote Star Child, which is a book about light, love, darkness, fear, cosmic war, human war, cyber war, all and all about looking after Mother Earth, because we are we are star children of our Mother Earth, and we need to go back to caring for her. Anyway, I started to explain this, and I've got like a musical for this, and there's a, and I said, you know, it would be nice to find a song. And he said to me, what's really strange is that. I wrote this song, but I never released it. Maybe, maybe it was about multidimensional. Maybe it wasn't for the past and it wasn't for the future. It's multidimensional. Therefore, this moment when you're feeling at a low, this song comes in and the song joy would not have been birthed into uh, this the 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 conversation today and it would have been forgotten but because of what happened to me in a, in a, uh, another scenario and I felt so low and I just remembered my power and I forgave the song joy was birthed which which I will sing as part of star child the musical. So you see, dance your way into a new life. It's not just about, oh, hey, I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm going to dance. I'm going to dance. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. That's important. You must dance. You must be uplifted. You must feel the vibrations. You must feel the passion. You must feel the purpose. One must feel the purpose. One must feel the passion. One must feel and have the intelligence of the higher intellect and have the balance of the inner child essence. So dance your way into a new life. It's about if something like that happens to you, you need to remove yourself from that situation. Just make an excuse. Just, just for two minutes. 
but you need to remove yourself from that energy and you need to check in and go back into yourself and say why did i why was i triggered on this and then once you forgive it it releases and it's gone but the higher understanding is it led on to something else. So just because that was low vibration. So what I'm trying to say is light and dark need to work together in a 3D physical reality. Until the day when we actually ascend into 5D then darkness, non-light, will not exist. It will just be higher love, divine love, higher divine wisdom, higher intellect, creating and manifesting without the interference of our limited mindset. We still have this going on because we are still living in our outside reality because this purification time's happening on this earth. At the moment, light and dark need to fuse together so that we learn our lessons, so that we are triggered, so that we can shine through, through that and receive the greatness of it. So dance your way into a new life is dance your way in the shadows into the light. Don't try to avoid your shadows because believe you me, your shadows will come and they will get you and grab you and it will become more and more and more intense. If you do not, if one does not learn the lesson that has been shown to them time and time again, the lessons become more intense. So every scenario in your outer world reality will be relating to that one lesson, be it karmic or be it a current lesson. <sighs> Breathe. It's heavy. I know. I've been waking up for since 2012. And I've been on this journey seven years of awakening. Doesn't mean I've ascended into 5D. It means I've gone from 3D into 4D. You see, when you start to learn the lessons and aware of when a 3D limited vibration, lower vibration comes crashing into a 5D, crashing, it cannot go into 5D. So instead, they join together and what is created is 4D. We, at the masses of humanity, now we are in 4D because we're still living in the outside reality in a 3D existence, which is becoming, which is clearing and purifying. And that's why we have to be so grateful for these purify, purification times and realize that Everyone has a contract, a soul contract. And if you think of when a big tax bill comes along and you prepare for your tax bill, that's exactly what's happening. Everyone has a soul contract. And upon that soul contract is certain conditions that they agree to prior to existence on this plane of 3D Earth which is now 4D. So Mother Earth, Gaia, planetary Gaia, has now ascended into 5D spiritually. 
which is like our light body, our um, inner, innate, our higher consciousness. So the higher consciousness of Mother Earth is now in 5D. Her physical body, however, is torn in 3D, but is going to be healed in 4D with us. She will be healed in 4D, which is where we are at, where people live from their heart, where people live from their unconditional, compassionate soul, because that's what it takes. So dance your way into a new life. Try each day not to blame, not to gossip, not to condemn, not to criticize, and not to judge. It's such a difficult lesson. Even if you've been on this path, spiritual path, for a long time, there's always the tests that come in because there's still more clearing so that we become creator beings in a 5D dimensional reality where we can manifest all we desire and require. Anything, healthy life, longevity, abundance, eternal youth. So we're all in 4D. There is no one, no one in 5D because we're not living in a 5D existence. Mother Earth, she hasn't ascended her physical body yet. Okay, I've really enjoyed talking with you. Oh, before I go, I just want to do a special mention, mention to Martin Zogby. He's so special. He's with Star Child and um, he's from Ghana and he's very young. Well, he's 21 and he's so special and he's part of Star Child. And I just want to mention also um, Janetta Barry for World Jenny's Day, which is here. World Jenny's Day, um, which is about how we are helping everyone on a mental health wellness on a global scale because we need to address this. Thank you. My name is Dr. Madeline Chan and you can find me on uh, LinkedIn, Dr. Madeline Chan. And you can find me on um, madelinechan.com. You can find Star Child, the book, on the link there, Amazon. I've so enjoyed talking with you all. So dance your way into a new life. I will be doing part two next week. Thank you so much. May love shine in your hearts eternally and dance your way into a newer life. Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, I'm Caroline Heward and welcome to USA Global TV and Radio. Our show today is Talking Heads and I'm an expert presenter in today's topic, which is 
my, about migraines. What's causing your migraine? And it's part of our Mind and Body Connection series. Let's begin. So I'd like to start off with a quote. Um, and this quote is from Jerry Swanson. He says, some people are disabled for hours or even days by a bad migraine and other individuals have moderate pain. Either way, workplace productivity is ultimately affected when the person has an attack. So this is somebody that actually suffers with migraine and his experience of migraine. I'd like to further look at migraines in terms of what, what the phases are of a migraine. But also today, I'd like to welcome our viewers on, three, on E360 TV who are joining us. And obviously all of our viewers on USA Global TV and radio and all across our social media platforms. So there are four phases of a migraine. And the first phase is called prodrome. And this is the early onset. And people that suffer with migraines will be familiar with what's uh, like the early onset, the symptoms that are making them say, oh, yes, I can feel a migraine coming. So they will have that, uh, that feeling that they can feel something coming on. And for some, it will be uh, a, a, an instance of the seeing lights flashing, it might be a blurry vision, it might be they just feel irritable and slightly unwell. And then they move into aura, which is a much deeper experience of the, of the lights flashing and feeling dizziness. And for some people, they might actually experience a sensation of vertigo. These symptoms are not common for everybody, but if people are experiencing the four phases, they will be experiencing these types of symptoms. And then we move full on into the migraine. And the migraine can last four hours to 22 hours, whereas the duration of the onset, so the first phase of experiencing that there's an onslaught of a migraine coming can be only a few hours for some and for some going into days. And the duration of the aura, which is the flashing lights and the dizziness, can be from five to 60 minutes. So these phases are, can be quite quick or can be quite slow. But moving into the duration of the migraine, this is where the experience of the intensity of pain, and it's usually on the one side of the, of the face, sort of at the top of the temple here. Uh, for some, and some people experience it at both temples, across the entire forehead and at both temples. It's individual to the individual's experience. And then after that time has passed, you know, four to 72 hours, so that can be as much as three to four days for some people, uh, there is post drain, which is essentially where a person feels that has had the migraine, that it's like sort of the after effects of the migraine. So what do I mean by that? They'll feel very groggy, uh, almost like a hangover experience, that um, they'll feel very drained of energy, a deflation of energy, and they'll feel extremely lethargic and almost as if like a sledgehammer has hit them, that they kind of need to sleep. I wanted to briefly look at the four phases so that there is some familiarity with a person that suffers with migraine because these, these phases aren't common to everybody and some people just go straight into the full on migraine, but some people will experience a variation of these phases. So what triggers migraine? Well, certain foods trigger migraine. Uh, so for instance, cheese, dairy products, uh, things like caffeine uh, will trigger a migraine. There is 
conversation uh, that caffeine can help a migraine. But um, if you have too much, it will actually have a negative effect of migraine. And I personally wouldn't uh, purport that having caffeine is a good idea to get rid of a migraine. But certainly uh, sauerkraut uh, will have an effect on migraine and can bring on a migraine. Also, uh, sensory stimuli, so flashing lights, um, strobe lighting, for instance, or if you're in a loud environment, uh, that can have an effect. Um, and if there's uh, cameras, so flashing cameras. Also, if there is um, an uncomfortable experience in terms of smell, if you smell something, that might set it off. Uh, or indeed, uh, if you experience a feeling, a trigger that upsets you, that will move you into triggering a migraine. Uh, alcohol as well has a bad effect and can trigger migraine. So uh, if you've had uh, an excessive amount of wine or beer, that can have an effect of triggering a migraine. And certainly red wine in particular will affect and trigger a migraine. So it is best to stay away from heavy alcohol situations um, because that can trigger a migraine. What I want to focus on right now is schedule. If you are overdoing it, if you have a lot going on in your world, if you have an overload of activities that you are managing, especially if you have some personal stuff going on in your life, such as uh, relationship issues or a home move, or a job situation that's difficult to manage. Um, or indeed, if there's been any family situations that you're handling, a friendship that's difficult, or a relationship issue that's not, um, that's not performing in the way that's giving you a good experience. So what I mean by scheduling is, if you are the type of person that will schedule work over and above your personal life, then there will be an, a knock on effect, which could uh, give an onslaught of a migraine. Now, stress here can create the migraine and it's an overload. It's when the body is overexerted with what it can and cannot handle. And what I mean by that is this is when you've pushed your adrenaline gland to the limit, when it can't cope with any more of what's going on that will create the migraine. So what's the best way to get rid of a migraine? Well, there are many pharmaceutical medications that purport to get rid of migraines. What I want to look at is a very, very simple way of getting rid of a migraine. And that is to stop what you're doing, to stop everything, and to literally lie down in a darkened room and take a breath and take another breath and relax and stop any activity that you're doing because the migraine is your nervous system's wake up call to say stop. It's where you need to switch the off button. So if you continue doing work, it will be very challenging to move through the migraine because you can't power through it. You have to literally stop when you have a migraine. And this particular picture is showing that the migraine is focused in the one space um, at the top of the one side of the head, which is a severe state of inflammation. And it will cause a seriousness of overload of the sensory experiences that will make you in so much physical inflammation and pain that it will be uncomfortable to continue. So to lie down in a darkened room with the curtains closed or the blinds closed and to stop, 
to be under the duvet, to stop. And you might find that a few hours or an evening or a morning or a night will reduce and move you through that period of excessive migraine. So let's look at why you get migraines. This is the body's natural way to tell you that you are in overload, that you have to stop what you're doing. This is your body's mechanism to show you that it's time to stop. It is time for you to stop doing the physical activities that you are doing, the mental activities that you are doing, and to rest. Let's look at why this is a trigger. For some people, they might even say, I'm getting a migraine coming. And if they are saying, I'm getting a migraine coming, it will be because they are in what I would say is overload. They're reaching the threshold of what's physically possible for them to cope with. I had a client once that um, she used to suffer with constant migraines and she has a very busy schedule. She was uh, very busy in her work and she was uh, project managing lots of different activities. And she also had children that she had to manage and she had a maid that she also had to manage and give her what was needed to be done and when to, when to do things. So she was project managing not only her business life, but her personal life as well. And her children would say, mummy, we don't want you to overdo it because you might get one of those migraines. And even the children recognised the fact that mummy was in for a migraine. So they recognised the symptoms or the way that she was portraying her behaviour. And then there would be a point that my client would get a migraine and she would only go into her room and stay there for two to three days. And when I explored this with her, the migraine, it, it worked out that she had taken on too much and that she couldn't cope. And that was her mechanism for taking a break. Literally taking a break from everything and everyone including her family life and her children, taking a break so that she didn't have to deal with anything or anyone. And when this was highlighted to her, she said, you know, you're right. When things get on top of me, I get a migraine. And we all have different mechanisms of coping with our everyday stress. And this is one of them. This is one of the coping strategies for people that have migraines to stop. It's the off switch. It's where they can literally flick the off switch to take a break. But instead of flicking the off switch and suffering to take a break, my invitation is for you to recognize when things are becoming too much for you, when you need to take a break, when you need to stop. And rather than getting that very painful and vicious cycle of the migraine to stop and take a breath and take time out. This is your body's coping mechanism to tell you to take time out. I'd like to look at some natural ways of overcoming migraines. Some natural remedies, one of the key remedies that I can recommend to you is feverfew. Feverfew is a herbal remedy in tablet form and it is an anti-inflammatory and it is absolutely brilliant at alleviating the headache and the migraine. Now, some people refer to it as a headache 
or a very difficult and challenging headache, and some people refer to it as a migraine. And it's the, it's whatever your language is around what you're suffering, it will get rid of your migraine. And the migraine is when it is so severe and throbbing and you just can't move forward and do anything. So this will alleviate those very severe symptoms. For some people, it works very quickly. For others, it takes a little more time. I would also recommend having uh, the addition of turmeric in your diet, which will alleviate any inflammation occurring in the body. Also, magnesium is very good to uh, maintain a healthy level of uh, the, the right combination of nutrients in the body. And a good multi, multi B vitamin is really good to alleviate any stress. In particular, B2 is very good for alleviating migraines. Meditation. Now, what do I mean by meditation? Because some people say, I haven't got time to meditate, I'm too busy. And the person that has the migraines will generally be very busy. So I'm going to give you a very simple way to, uh, to uncover the word my, uh, meditation so that you feel more comfortable with the word. And that is to breathe. When you breathe into your belly, when you breathe lower into your body, because when you are stressed, you will breathe here into the upper chest, and then you're only fueling what's in the, in the mind and in the head. So if you breathe down into your belly, you will take the oxygen down from the head and feed the rest of the body. And so if you're doing fuller breaths where the belly expands, you will alleviate the symptom of the throbbing and the action of the activity that you experience when you're suffering with migraines. Also, when you are in a state of relaxation, so when you are under the duvet with all the lights out and the blinds cut and shut, it will give your brain a, a point in time to relax from all the stimuli, all the sensory stimuli of light, of, uh, of sensory smell, of taste, because sometimes those can be overload and can trigger. Exercise. While you have a migraine, it's very difficult to exercise, but if you regularly exercise, even if you jog or take a walk in the sunshine, if you do any kind of uh, aerobic uh, exercise, you will feel different and it will take the energy away from your mind and into your body, which will prevent the migraine. And sleep. When you don't get enough sleep or the opposite, when you get too much sleep, it can trigger a migraine. So sleep is a balancing thing. It's a balancing act to make sure that you have the right amount of good quality sleep. And that means having a good sleep hygiene ritual, which means no looking at your screen, at least a couple of hours before you're going to sleep. Otherwise, the brain will be highly stimulated. And to ensure that you have a good quality of sleep, that you refrain from watching any TV prior to you going to sleep, that maybe if you read a book or do a brief meditation, which will relax the mind. It is when the mind is over analyzing, over thinking, and in overdrive that, that the migraine can happen. And so it is about relaxing the mind by taking the energy out of the mind and bringing it down into the body. When the mind is in overdrive, that's when your head literally hurts with the thoughts. There are so many thoughts that it literally hurts. And so it is important to calm the thoughts down so that you prevent a migraine occurring. Uh, 
I'd like to um, uh, finish with uh, a quote here from somebody that um, I felt it was a bit tongue in cheek, but actually looking at the reality of a migraine for them. Migraines are my body's way of telling me it's time to take an extended break from reality. I thought that that kind of sums up where I've been going with this, that migraines are your body's natural check-in to say, stop, take a break. It's time to take a rest, not just from the doing, also from the thinking and the overthinking and analyzing to literally create an off switch for the mind. There are many reasons why migraines are your mechanism of coping to stop. And in my free consultation and in my sessions, if you would like to book a course of sessions, my sessions will actually identify the root causes behind what's creating the symptoms of migraine. Because for each person, it will be different. For each person, we are all different. We are all human experiencing life and challenges from very different places. And so there is no one reason for every person. Everyone is an individual. And I work with chakra psychology, how the mind and body connects and what happens physically, emotionally, mentally when the person is out of balance. And the out of balance is the symptom that comes up, that that comes up whether it's a physical symptom such as migraine or an emotional symptom or a mental symptom. And this is a physical symptom, migraine, and it's also a mental symptom as well where the mind doesn't switch off. And I would love to help you cure and prevent you getting migraines because identifying root cause will move you from experiencing this very debilitating experience of pain where you literally have to stop. Thank you for your attention and your interest. Please subscribe to USA Global TV and Radio. You can find all of our talking episodes under the playlist Talking Heads. Please do reach out to me if I may be of service to you. You can contact me on no more stress at live.co.uk or you can reach out to me by, by phoning me on plus 44 if you're international, if you're local 07523 120 189. I look forward to helping you break through and bust your stress, literally breaking through the root cause of your symptoms that are causing you debilitating pain to the point that you have to stop and take days. How many days are you losing from your social life, from your family, and more importantly, from you living your best life? Namaste. This program has been brought to you in part by Zane Carson Carruth, etiquette and protocol expert, international award-winning author, television show host, and philanthropist. Thank you to Zane, our official diamond sponsor for USA Global TV and Radio in partnership with E360 TV. Zane is the author of the world's first tooth fairy ever, as well as many other children's books. She's also the television host of Elegance, Polished Demeanor, and Posh Living, seen on USA Global TV and Radio. Hi, my name is Zane Carson Carruth, and I'm the author of this book, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Reading is magic. 
Studies have shown that reading to your children lays the foundation for greater success in life. Reading helps develop language and vocabulary skills. It helps improve memory, and it encourages curiosity and inspires creativity. The benefits are immeasurable, and as a parent, you'll benefit too. In only 10 or 15 minutes a day, you'll be creating more memories and a bonding experience that will last for years to come. So take time to read to your children. Read them books about things that engage and interest them. Tales of fairies and magic fascinate children, and as everyone knows, the Tooth Fairy is at the top of the list. If your child loves magic, wands, adventure, and what child doesn't, you'll love reading them books from the trademark series The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Follow along as Abella, the world's first tooth fairy, accidentally starts the tooth fairy tradition. Learn the tricks of being a professional tooth fairy in the book Abella Starts a Tooth Fairy School. Your child's imagination will soar as you read the adventures of Abella and her magic wand. These wonderful books are available at worldsfirsttoothfairy.com and at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. To learn more about Zane, contact her through her website, zanecaruth.com, Z-A-N-E-C-A-R-R-U-T-H dot C-O-M. Order Zane's books and merchandise, Contact her about being a keynote speaker at your next event. This program is also brought to you in part by Ella Holly, artist and singer of the single Things That We Do. If I look into your heart, are you looking back at me? Am I everything you want, baby? If my heart was in your hands, would it be for you? 